Hello and welcome to Dart Sim. Today I'm going to briefly discuss how to operate the ECG Rhythm and Defibrillator Simulator. Let's first discuss how to operate the Rhythm Generator. We have 24 different cardiac rhythms ranging from our normal sinus rhythm to our bradycardia, our tachycardias, our heart blocks, our ventricular arrhythmias, and also our ST elevation MI rhythms as well. You can also change the rhythm by holding down the shift key and entering the desired rhythm number. We also have a 12 lead function, so whatever rhythm is being displayed, just simply tap on the 12 lead button here and it will display 12 lead of that rhythm. We also have a pacer function as well. So once the pacer is activated, you then have to increase the milliamps in order to see full capture. And once you have full capture, you can also adjust the right here below. We also have synchronized cardioversion. So simply tap on the sync button there and then you can select your joules here. You can charge and give a simulated shock. And if your patient goes into VFib, you can start CPR. And we've got a CPR metronome that goes at a rate of 100 compressions per minute so the student can compress at the appropriate rate. And while CPR is in progress, we can then charge the defibrillator to the appropriate joules. You can default at 150. Uh, or 200 joules, uh, 170, up to 360. And then you just charge, and stop compressions and give that shock, and then resume CPR. At any time you can also turn the sound off. We also have the option of entering a blood pressure manually. And then a student can then uh, activate the NIBP start button by pressing the N key on the keyboard. And the blood pressure will be displayed here. You can also enter in SPO2 and also set uh, custom alarm levels for heart rate, SPO2, CO2, respiratory rate. You also have the option of hiding all the functions if you want to use the dart sim just strictly as a cardiac monitor and if you want to use your own defibrillator equipment you can still utilize that and still use ours just for display only so that's another option we also have a help button here so if you want to print out 
all the functions for the keyboard and have that as a shortcut. You can also print out the rhythm generator key as well and print that out. So this is operating the Dart Sim in what we call manual mode. Uh, if you want to run one of our custom scenarios, just go to our task button up here and then go to open and we already have all the ACLS and PALS and NRP cases already loaded. So we have scenarios created. All you have to do is just choose your case, open up your case, and this is how your scenario is going to run out. So it comes up in the spreadsheet. At any time you can also change, make any uh, additions, enter in heart rate, SpO2, uh, change the duration on what vital signs you want to display. So if we're going to run this scenario here, we'll go ahead and we'll close. And it gives you the option to start this scenario now or later. So I always just click on no, so you can always uh, reset, start from the beginning, and then read off the scenario uh, to your student. And then once ready, you can run the schedule. Up on the top right corner here, just lets you know how much time you have until the next scenario will be displayed. You've got a code timer up here in the top, so you just click on that, and that keeps track of real time. Uh, you can t just press on the NIBP start button here, or you can also hit the N key on your keyboard. And if you want to adjust the SPO2 on your keyboard, your wireless keyboard or standard keyboard, you can do that or if it's on your laptop. Just hold down the S as in SAM key and hit the plus or minus, uh, however well your student performs. You can also adjust the heart rate as well. Just simply hold the H key and again the plus or minus to adjust that manually. If you want to advance to the next scenario, you can do that by just hitting the next button if your student is advancing well. And again, we've got our CPR button and our metronome at 100 compressions per minute. We have our waveform active capnography here, so you can also uh, change the CO2 by holding the C key and then hitting the plus or minus key to adjust that manually. And you can adjust that to how well students are performing compressions. You can also adjust that to simulate return of spontaneous circulation. Again, we can charge and shock. You can also reverse or go to manual mode at any time. So if we go to the next scenario, looks like we have asystole. You can resume compressions. We can advance to the next scenario. We got a spike in CO2, we check a pulse, patient does have a pulse, but no breathing, so we can monitor the respiratory rate here, the patient is intubated. We can also adjust the rate here manually or by holding the R key. At any time, you can also change the rhythm manually and also you can get a 12 lead as well on all rhythms that we have displayed. So we have 24 different 12 leads that will be displayed on whatever rhythm you decide to choose. 
for NRP courses. If capnography is not utilized, you can also use the pediatric end tidal CO2 detector here by simply just clicking on the detector to notify the student that they have a good tube. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want to get a free trial, please visit our free trial page. Thanks for watching.